let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about windmills, in particular using windmills to heat a greenhouse. Now, that's an interesting concept, and there's all kinds of windmills out there. The type of windmills we're going to focus on are the three, five, and six blade standard windmills that you see all over the countryside. There are some fancy dancy new designs out there and you can buy them. Um, there's all kinds of manufacturers that are starting to make them. The problem I've seen is the only places that show data on these new fancy dancy windmills that looks good is from the manufacturers. All the private reviews I've seen and literally all of them on the new type of windmills suck. So we're going to focus on the standard old three, five, six blade windmills that produce electricity, which we're going to use that electricity to make heat, to heat a greenhouse. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And we have piles of videos on greenhouses and growing and heating greenhouses in our archives. You can check out. Now, I'm going to give you the same old standard spiel about hit like, hit subscribe. But here's the thing. I'm going to tell you why. And it's not just because it helps me on this channel. But if you hit like and you hit subscribe on content like this, the YouTube algorithm is going to suggest more content like this from me and from other creators as well. So unless you want to see more Kardashians, you need to hit like and subscribe now. Why windmills? Everyone goes on about solar and photovoltaic or the thermal solar with the evacuated tubes and oh, it's so great. Or then there's passive solar. But here's the problem with solar and heating. Heating is fine if you live in Texas, but if you live in Canada, where I live in Manitoba, where it gets down to minus 30, which is minus 45 with a wind chill, you're not going to be able to get enough energy out of solar unless you've got a massive array to heat your greenhouse. But, and the main reason for that is that in the winter, when we get these chilling cold temperatures, we only got about four or five hours of sunlight it, with a 24 hour day. So it's just not enough sun. Now in the summertime, we can get 18, 19 hours of sunlight, but we don't need the heat then. And it's pretty hard to store that amount of heat seasonally. It can be done, but once again, you get into cost. But here's the interesting thing. When it's cloudy out, it's usually windy. And it's not just when the sun's shining. That wind will blow 24 hours a day. Now, this is not a viable option for all locations. The location where I live, I live on Lake Manitoba, looking out on 30 miles of open water, which is all a big tundra and frozen ice. But we get a lot of wind. So what's really nice is knowing that we get that wind, and we get that wind 24 hours a day, this is an energy source that can be tapped into for heating. Windmills can produce energy in a couple of different ways. The most common way you're going to see is that they're going to be attached to a generator and produce electricity. They can also mechanically produce energy and or heat. This is a lot less common and you there isn't very many systems you can buy that you could set up right away like this. But windmills that produce electricity are all over the place online. You can go to eBay, you can go to Alibaba, you can go to Amazon, or you can go to a pile of different private companies that specialize in windmills to produce electricity. So now that you got this electricity, how do you make heat? Well, there's a couple of ways we can go about that. And you can either directly put that heat into the greenhouse with an electric heater. Uh, the kind that you warm up your house with. Uh, they use a lot of electricity, but you if you have a big windmill, you're going to produce a lot of electricity. So the cost of it isn't so much of the running time as the size of the system that you're going to put on. The problem with windmill energy, though, is that it's spiky. It goes up and down and up and down. So you really need to find a way to level that out. And how you level that out is with a battery. Now, you don't necessarily need to have a huge battery array. A small battery to level out the spikes when it's windy might be enough. And then the battery shuts down when it's not that windy if you have some other cheaper kind of long-term energy storage option. Um, 
with electricity, you, you're pretty much limited to big battery arrays for long-term energy storage. But if the goal is to produce heat, there are heat batteries and a few different options you can look at to store the heat from the windmill electricity longer term. And when I say longer term, I'm saying 12, 24, 36 hours. And there isn't a lot of periods where I live, at least. I mean, there's lots of places where you don't get much wind. But on the lake where I live, to be able to go 36 hours without wind is rare. Very rare. And it is possible to put a small solar array in to boost your energy. Because when you've got no wind, generally you got a lot of sun. It, it happens, but it's rare that it's cloudy and no wind. So longer term energy storage, like two, three days or more, four or five days, you can do it with batteries, but it's going to cost you. I mean, batteries have come down a lot, especially the lithium ions and the lead acid, a, a huge amount in price in the last few years. It's absolutely amazing how much cheaper batteries are, but they're still relatively expensive compared to other ways of storing energy. Now, energy doesn't have to be stored as electricity. Energy can be stored as heat. And a heat battery, well, one of the best ways to store heat is with a water tank. And if you insulate that water tank, basically you've got the same thing as a hot water heater in your house. Um, you heat it up and you, a hot water tank, unless you've got a tankless, but the tanked hot water tanks are insulated tanks that heat the water up and they don't run the heater all the time. The heater just runs when the water falls below a certain temperature. Well, with a windmill, you just keep pumping the energy in when you've got the wind, but when the wind stops, the water stays warm in the insulated tank and you draw off of that tank, the water off of that tank to heat your greenhouse. Now you can heat it in a couple of ways. You can have a radiant floor where you're running some pipes through the floor. I did this. Um, I'm not using a windmill, but I do heat one of my greenhouses with a radiant floor and water, hot water. You could also get a radiator and a fan. Now there's wonderful, great looking commercial versions of this. And there's also do it yourself versions where you buy a used radiator and you hook up a fan to it and it blows an enormous amount of heat. The fan is extremely efficient with a car radiator or something very similar to that to pump air through and grab the heat from that radiator and transfer it to your greenhouse. So using water is a fantastic method for a windmill to heat up a large water tank. Now you don't, you could do this with a hot water tank for a house, but it's not that hard to do it yourself, a larger tank that can get you through longer periods of no wind. So with a larger tank, um, and basically it's just a hot water tank. So it's got a heating element in it that heats the water up when it has energy pushing into it. With a larger tank, you have to insulate it yourself. You could use an IBC tote, but I'm not very comfortable with the material in hot water. I mean, as soon as the water gets over a certain material on an IBC tote, you could look at it getting soft and melting and having a failure. So what I suggest is maybe trying to find some sort of a large older fuel tank or some sort of larger tank that's made out of metal because metal is going to be able to handle hot water no problem. I mean the water can go right up to boiling and it's not going to melt or, or deform the metal in any way. Uh, all you have to do is clean it out. Remember that this water is not going to be in contact with your plants at all. It's all going to be in tubes so it really doesn't matter if it was used for some sort of bad material, as long as it doesn't leak into your ground and can hold the water, the uh, a metal tank would work extremely well. Now, if you can get your hands on, say, a 500 or 1,000 gallon metal tank, you've really got something for an amount of water storage because that compared to your typical household hot water tank is exponentially larger and it allows your windmill and or small solar array to heat up that water even during the daytime when the sun's out and you don't really need the heat because greenhouses will of course heat up in the sun, even in the winter, as long as they're getting direct sunlight. So this large metal tank is something that's essential to affordably use greenhouse heating. 
Um, I'm open to other ideas. If you guys got them, please post them in the comments below. But water's cheap. It's actually free where I live. You just got to pump it out of the ground. So now that you've got yourself your large metal tank, you've got to insulate that tank or it's not going to hold the heat of the water very long. I mean, the size of it will hold the heat of the water for a certain amount of time. But if you insulate this tank, you're going to get a lot more time. So my inclination is to actually put it in the ground, but not, and the ground itself will act as some insulation as it heats the ground up around it. It takes more time to go down in temperature. But even better than that is that if you set your metal tank in the ground and you use insulation around it, now you could use spray foam, you could use all kinds of styrofoam bits that you could find from the dump, the stuff that people want to throw away if you shred it and put it all around there. Well, it's going to act as a nice amount of insulation, especially if you can get two or three feet thick of it. And that's not that hard to do if you get the material for free. But my material of choice for insulation on a large tank would be to first off to start setting it in the ground in a fairly reasonably tight hole. You know, you've only got a foot or two feet on either side and on the bottom, and to fill that gap with aircrete. And aircrete, especially if it's done not for strength, but for insulation values, is almost as good as styrofoam. It's fantastic for insulation. And if you're looking at two feet of aircrete, well, keep in mind, your house has probably only got four to six inches of insulation in it, of whether it's bad insulation or styrofoam insulation. And if aircrete is coming in at the same value, that's four times as much insulation as the walls in your house or double the insulation in your attic. That's going to hold a lot of heat. It's, it, it, your large metal holding tank now will retain the heat that's put into it for many days. And it'll only basically go down in heat in the short term, like under a week, by you using it. So this gives you a big heat reservoir that you can use a windmill to heat and draw that heat off into a radiator or radiant floor to heat your greenhouse. It's an option that I don't think anybody has really used, but when we get into larger areas, it's something that we should be looking at, especially in northern climates. So that's my video on windmill energy heat production for greenhouses and it's something that hasn't been explored and in areas especially northern areas where winter time is when it's coldest when we need the most energy and winter time is when we get the least amount of solar energy the wind is still howling and in a lot of places although not everywhere some people just don't get enough wind to make this viable but in a lot of places there's enough wind to produce enough energy to heat your greenhouse. So long as you're using a passive solar greenhouse or a Chinese style greenhouse, that can keep the heat. That's it for today, folks. I hope to see you in the next video.